Well, greetings and salutations to our fine podcast audience. Welcome to episode 105. We are honored that you checked it, checked us out and you are here today. My name is Jason. To my right is Ed. This is Nathan. We are part of the teaching team here at Community Christian Church. And this podcast, in case you're new around here, is just us getting together every week, having some conversations that are going to help you, hopefully, uh, think better about your life in a more Jesus-centered sort of way. Yep. That's what we've been aiming for for these past 105 episodes. <laughs> and we're still aiming. That's yeah. right. We still Target, have not Target's out there. there somewhere. And we just keep shooting at it. Yeah, yeah, we do. We'll see if we get it today. So anyway, um, thanks for being here. Thanks for sending us questions. We have, we got a, uh, a list of, uh, I, I would say, very thoughtful questions over the past few weeks. That's wow. good. We're going to be tackling over That's the That's how you couple. know we didn't create them. They're yes, very thoughtful. Very thoughtful <laughs> and uh, very important questions. They're we all must important. have been very unclear in previous podcasts. <laughs> exactly. People are needing to clarify. They're like, let me be a little more thoughtful in this question. Maybe they'll be more thoughtful. Maybe these idiots can figure <laughs> out what <laughs> I've been trying them to in ask. the right direction. Well, if, if you're trying to outthink us, you're you doing, already did it. it. You already did it. <laughs> Good job. Congratulations. It don't take much. So here we go. Uh, what? By the way, if you want to send a question in uh, for our discussions, uh, you can do that. There's a link in the comment. What is that called? Oh, the, the description. description. <laughs> I forgot what it was called there for a second. It's in the description of this video. Carry your it's in the cloud. It's, it's just out Carry there in the cloud. Somewhere. I don't know. I, I got tongue tied. Sorry, guys. That's right. FedEx. That's right. FedEx or something. I was. I wasn't made for this medium. <laughs> all right. Speaking. <laughs> Communicating with language? Yes, that's okay. Yes, that's what I meant. Fair enough. All right, good. Me either. Okay. Well, this is going to be a great fight. That's actually that's actually our question for today. Yeah. What, what was medium Jason, was Jason made for? What was for? Jason made for? Silence. That's what I was made for. No. Okay. You, you fix there. Bill. Nathan? Bill keeps pointing at my. Um, Bill's our producer, by the way. He's behind he's the camera. He's sitting behind the camera, camera making faces microphone. like I agree. Yeah. Jason was not made for this medium. No, he's just pointing <laughs> at my microphone. I'm guessing it needs a point. It's better now. Bill says it's better. better okay. So that's good. So he can hear us. All right. Better time to read this question. All right. Here's the question. Actually, uh, this is comes in the form of two questions. We got two separate questions, but they were about the same root issue. I okay. Believe. So I'm going to combine these questions. So if you sent these in, uh, just know I'm not ignoring your question. I'm actually trying to get a better answer for you. Mm -hmm. oh. That's what I do. <laughs> or we just have one answer. <laughs> <and we're gonna laughs> have one. Jason thought questions. your question was bad, and so he uh, made a new one. Right. We've got a new one. <laughs> it's not worth repeating ourselves. Okay, good. But these two questions do kind of hint at the same overall theme. So we're going to talk about that theme today. So the first question was worded this way. A uh, person wants to know, uh, can prayer change things if God already has the plan and if he already knows what will happen? I've heard this question and asked a lot. Sure. Very Me good too. question. We're gonna, and the, the second question is similar. Uh, it's about what God knows and what he chooses to do. Uh, the question is, if God knows who will already choose him and who won't choose him, then what's the point in making people who are just going to go to hell anyway? Yeah. <laughs> so basically the, the overall theme of both of these questions, I thought, was this idea of God knowing things in advance, and how does that uh, how does that affect you know the choices that we make in this life? Do we really even have choices? Mm -hmm. um, and if so, how does that work with God and Him being all powerful? And and there's a lot of questions around this uh, that circle around out there around these there's real fancy terms called determinism, mm -hmm. uh, foreknowledge. Uh, versus human free will. And then there's this thing called open theism that right. people kind of... So we're going to talk about all of those kinds of views of looking at God. So let's start with this idea of um, does God really know everything that's going to happen? Well, I would say does both, he of determine the, it all? both of those questions to me, and of course since I don't have the questioner sitting here, it seems to me the questions presuppose that God does. Yes. Which I think, if you read the Bible, so if we're told to pray, and I can think of instances in the Bible where people do pray and God does change, okay? Mm, okay. So now I have an instance in the Bible that a person prays and what God had already told them was going to happen doesn't happen. happen. It changes. True. So now, 
instead of me questioning, should prayer change things? Maybe I should say, I know now prayer can change things. Mm. Maybe the thought I had that God has already determined everything was the wrong thought. Hmm. Right. Good thought, Ed. <laughs> That's just the way I would go with that. If the if I have this thought that I have an example of that proves it's true, mm. yeah. That, yeah. that, you know, God told this guy he's going to die, he prays, and God says, tell, okay. tell him exactly what you're referring well, to. Well, I can't remember the guy's name, or I would have. <laughs> uh, it, it's in the Old Testament. He's a king. He's told that he's going to uh, die. He, when it has a guy? I wanted to say that, but I wasn't absolutely sure. So somebody, you back I was, me up on that I was, I'll back you up because I wasn't actually listening to the first part of what he said. Uh, <laughs> I was sitting here reading one of the words trying to figure out what was that word. So I'll just be honest. I didn't hear the, the story, but... Yeah, I, I there's a guy, it. there's a king in the Old Testament. God says, you're going to die. He mm. he prays right? fervently. I, think, I do think it's... I can look it up. I think it's Hezekiah. So I'm anyway, pretty, he pretty prays, sure. God says, I, and the words that are actually translated in English is, God repented. Mm. Now, which gives us a whole uh, idea. A what, whole other which thing. Which just simply means your it's idea of repentance mind. doesn't mean that's what you think it means. Yes. It means he changed his mind. Yes. He changed his mind and said, okay. So we know now prayer does change things. Mm. So maybe your idea that God has already determined everything, maybe that's the one that's wrong. Hmm. That's... I will say for me, that's where my yes. my answer has come down to. I do not believe God has predetermined everything that's going to happen. I agree with that. Um, now, there's a lot of people that on a different camp oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. that would say that's that's not. For me, it comes down to what, what it all boiled down to me for when I finally decided on where I fell on this issue was. If God has everything determined, like if God just makes everything happen, including... What we do, right? That's right. He basically makes everything happen, like a you know, almost like a puppet master pulls mm -hmm. on the strings and makes everything happen. Then, what the way it got caused me problems was then God would also have to be the author of evil. He has to be responsible he for is, everything yeah, that happens. He's responsible for that, and and I don't believe that the full uh, the full text of Scripture gives us that indication that he mm -hmm. is. I think that would violate his character, and so there has to be something in the middle there somewhere. Mm -hmm. Or or a little farther to the other end of that uh, thinking, um, so if God doesn't make everything happen exactly the way He wants it to happen, then does I guess you sort of answered this, but did did we answer? Does God actually know what's going to happen beforehand? Well, I think that there are a couple of thoughts on that too. I yeah. think there are people that believe God does know what's going to happen, but self limited in not causing it. Mm -hmm. I personally do not believe. I believe God knows everything that can be known. That's mm. the way I would say it. Yeah. Mm. But because the future has not happened yet, and I know that's a whole nother realm of, <laughs> you know, now we've got to talk about quantum stuff and all that that's, thing. Yeah. But uh, That's way too it, deep. For it, us, it's a little, I'm, that's why I didn't go into that. Yes. I'm in theology and not <laughs> into all of those yeah. areas. I believe God knows everything that can be known, but he does not know what I am going to choose in the moment, which I think requires way more intelligence. Me too. I personally think it requires a much wiser being to be able to work everything for my good and for the good of everyone who loves him when he does not know what we're going to choose, but in a moment he can be at work uh, for my good in spite of everything that's going on. Mm. Well, and I think, you know, I think the root of this question, it's not, they're not bad questions. But I think, the, as you said, the question already presupposes things. Mm. And I think it gets to how do we determine what we know about God? Because I was in a group the other day and somebody said, since we know that God is, and I remember even what they said, but it was some call for that most people would agree God is. And I remember sitting there going, but how do we know that? Mm -hmm. And I remember having this. And a lot of what these come from, even qualifiers like omniscience, omnipotence, these are ideas that really come from our enlightenment idea that if there was a God, mm. these, like the common one is, could God create a boulder that was too heavy for him to pick up? That's not a question that the Bible asks, mm -hmm. nor does the Bible answer. That is either from Greek thought, so like Plato, Aristotle, or like enlightenment, uh, this idea of I can everything that can be known uh, can be known through the human mind that I don't even really need a body to experience things, that I could just go, you know, Rene Descartes, the, the famous one, right, that I could just go into thought experiments mm -hmm. and figure it out. 
The problem is that's not the world that the Bible is is writing a story in, that we are body, soul, you know, uh, emotions, heart, all of these things. We are all these things. Our body is not less than our mind. Right. Our heart is not more than our body. All of these ways are ways that we interact with God. And so what we need to know about God has been, as you guys have already said on this answer, so this is not adding anything, but has been revealed to us in Scripture. And so what my job as a believer is not to bring questions to the text that the text is not asking or trying to it, answer mm -hmm. and then go, now answer this for me. It doesn't mean this is, these are bad questions, but the idea, the idea that God determines or doesn't determine really isn't even part of what the Scripture is trying to it answer. It isn't trying yeah. to answer that. Because that, that, I, I, I see when people say, so God clearly does know that this is going to happen. There are certainly stories that imply that. There are certainly stories that, that also say that God changes his mind. And if I've already predetermined in my mind that God does know or doesn't know, I can rationalize away either of those stories. Well, it just looks like God knew. That's right. Or it just looks like God didn't know. All of that is me bringing to the text something it didn't ask. This question, both of the questions are good questions if we drop the part about does God know. Because yeah. the question of why do I pray can't, does God respond to my prayers? Mm -hmm. Well, I think the scripture does answer I, I that question. I was going to say, that's pretty clear. And scripture. why do people go, why does God allow people to go to hell? The scripture does answer those questions. Mm -hmm. But I just think, and so once again, I'm not saying, I get why you have this question. I think all of us would say we have wrestled with these yes. questions. So I'm not saying they're bad questions. Well, and I think there's a big thing that we should get at. And may, I don't mean to just cut that line of, thought off, but I was thinking while you were talking, I thought about it earlier, but I'm 62 and I'd forgotten. Uh, I thought about <laughs> it again right now. A bigger part of this question is, if God knows everything, there's no reason for me to pray. Mm. Well, maybe prayer is not about you getting think God to do things. That's right. Mm -hmm. So maybe the other part of the question is, <laughs> even if God does know, mm -hmm. but I don't think he does, what is the purpose of prayer? Mm -hmm. That's a really, really good question. And a part of it is about asking God for stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. But there's a part of it about just about forming me into the kind of person that I am co... I am co Nathan used this phrase in a message just recently, co-operating. Mm -hmm. I am operating in this world with God. I don't operate on my own. I co-operate with God. I'm yeah. doing my right. life in co-operation with God. And prayer is the means by which I do that. I talk to him. I listen. The spirit is at work in me. So that's why I pray. Pray is yes. my means to cooperate. Well, and yeah. it, it takes us back to the two original questions. We do know for sure that the scriptures teach us, like what you said, it does teach us to pray mm -hmm. because yeah. there there is something in it that we need. Yes. Something. Well, and, so, and, and I'm not. I don't want to. Yeah. I just want to add. If that was the only reason, that would be enough. Yes. If the reason to pray is because Jesus told me to, that's, that's really all as a believer mm -hmm. I need to know. So continue. I just wanted yes. to throw that in. Yes. And and I was just going to make reference to the other question of, you know, um, we do know in Scripture that the, that it's very clear that, uh, that we should uh, reach out to people and, mm -hmm. and share the gospel with mm -hmm. them so that they will have... Uh, they will come to faith in Jesus so as not to be separated from him for That's all eternity. Right. So in that sense, God is not, certainly doesn't operate in the fashion of, well, I already predetermined these people, so you just need to let them go. That's right. There's certainly, so there's that in the scripture. So it tells me something, and this is where I'm bringing it all back to. It tells me something about the nature of who God is, which sure. is what we often always get back to on this mm -hmm. podcast. The nature of God, who he is, as revealed to us in Jesus. That's right. So, again, not that, like I said, that we you start out on the, on a premise with these questions that God is here. He's got this predetermined, you know, set ways that things are going to go, and therefore it relieves me from the uh, usefulness to pray or to evangelize or whatever. Well, that right there. The premise of that idea is not yeah. what found in the Bible. Or even the, you know, that question on hell sort of presupposes why even have people and hell? Why have both of those things? Mm -hmm. You know, if mm -hmm. if God really loves people, why create hell? 
If God creates people, why let anybody go to hell? Well, there's a nature of people. God decided that people, humans as a being, get to choose. Yeah, yeah I we, was going to bring we, it back we to that. Are, yes. We are unique. Yes. So when God decided to create, well, I shouldn't, I, apparently spiritual beings yeah. also have some yeah. choice involved because yes. we know they rebel. So there is a kind of beings that God has created that they, by that nature, he gave us choice. The only way to give us choice is to give us choice. Mm. We then, must have... And the consequences. And of our the choices. consequences of our choice. So there has to be a place that if you say, I don't want God. I just don't want God. I don't want to do life with God. I don't want to cooperate. Mm -hmm. I want to operate. Yeah. I just want to do what I want to do then there has to be a place where those people can go or there wasn't really a choice. Mm. Yeah. Well, because I, I think the idea, and, this, and I think this gets to our, our, our nature as broken people and how we don't want what God wants. Um, the, the argument I often hear is, well, if I was God, right, I would, I would never allow someone that I love to go to hell. And the, the example they said to you, as a loving parent, mm. I would make sure I did... I would make sure that my kids stayed safe. And I said, but you have to admit, if the only way to keep your child safe at, at 18, at an age where they can decide, mm -hmm. is to kidnap them and lock them away with you. Yep. Now, you know they're safer with you. If they leave, they're going to go die. Mm -hmm. That existence is not an existence they want, nor really do you want. because the, Well, and honestly, in our country, that's called a crime. No, I know. Yeah, true. True. <laughs> I, mean, I know. I know. That, I know. That, that's just honest. Yeah. Everybody here, if you found out your neighbor had their 24-year-old locked up because they thought they were safe, those people ought to be reported. Right. Mm -hmm. And so what we know is that isn't loving. Even if you're right that this 20, at some point, the adult has to get the choice I'm choose, and I know this is terrible. I'm choosing death. Mm. I'm gonna choose because it's better than being with you, and we have. Well, that's the way it's put to us in scripture. That's what right. I mean. Choose that's life what or death. I mean. Yeah. Yes. Is so. So when you get down to the nature of God with these questions, both I think get to the same real point, which is that when God created humans, what God wanted was cooperation. He wanted human beings that would co-rule with Him, and He wanted He created this entire planet that we could co-rule with him in his likeness, in his image, along with him, that we would want what he wants, we would desire what he wants. Prayer is, and the way I explained, used to explain it to teenagers was, it's like training wheels for us. Mm -hmm. It is a way that God won, like you said, some, sometimes prayer is just about shaping me, mm -hmm. that I pray and it's making me the kind of person that when I pray, God wants to go, yes. Mm -hmm. And then other times, part of the training wheels, because we all know this is, that, that God is going, yeah, that's a good idea. Let's do that because we're cooperating. Now, God's never going to do something against his nature, which mm -hmm. is why it's a relational thing. If you had a relationship with your spouse where you, couldn't, where you wouldn't speak to each other, but we were somehow going to make decisions together, I don't even know how that happens. It would ultimately become one person making decisions right. and the other person just being angry about it all the time, mm -hmm. which is how most of us treat God. Yeah. We feel like God is making all these decisions and I'm angry because he's not doing what I want. And prayer is that. I or, think, or I'm running around making all the decisions and God's like, well, yeah, okay, yes. okay, all right, man. That's yes. the way you want it. And then hell, I think, is the same thing. What God wanted was cooperation. Mm -hmm. He wanted relationship. But cooperation, co is a part. It's both sides wanting to be together. And God knows in existence where you don't want to be, because the only way for us to cooperate with God is for us to be made holy, is for us to, to be like God. So that's going to take a process for God to make us like him. And if I'm a person who, don't, who doesn't want to be gentle and patient and forgiving and merciful, I don't really want God. Yeah. Right, that's right. What I want is to not go to hell. Yeah. Which is honestly, in a in a lot of American Christianity, that's the way it's presented well, to people. That's the prime motivation for a lot of folks is let's get people out of hell, not let's get people to love Jesus. Mm -hmm. And I think what so when you get to these questions and you talk about the nature of God, I think that's what shows me about God is like you said, God, God so highly values free will because what God wanted was cooperation. He wanted relationship. He wanted us to do things together, but He understands. 
we're going to have to submit to a process of becoming like him. And whether, you know, the big words for that is stuff like sanctification or things like this, that I am going to have to be made in the image of Jesus. We often use the term discipleship as kind of our, that's the process by which you choose to become sanctified. That you say, I'm going to follow Jesus because he's going to mold me and shape me into a more gentle piece. And one of the things that we've been laying out for our disciple process this year is, uh, think uh, was the quote by Dallas of God's trying to create in you the kind of person that can do what you want. Yes. Yes. That God could. That's right. That when you pray, God would go, that's exactly what I would. Mm-hmm. You know, and as a parent, I'll just say when your parent, when your kids get old enough and you see them do things and you go, man, that's exactly what I hoped would happen. Mm-hmm. I didn't have to say it. I didn't, I didn't make it happen. I didn't command it happen. Mm-hmm. And I look at that and I go, that's not only what I wanted, that's better than I hoped yeah, it would be. I don't think I would have thought of that. I wouldn't have thought about that. And yeah. I think God does that too. He wants us to get to the place we so cooperate with him that he goes, that's exactly it. Yes, I'm, I'm in on that. Yes. And you know, I'm, I'm right now in a situation in my life where there is a tough relationship in my life and I by natural means is I'm trying to fix the other person in this relationship. I'm trying to get them to do what I really do believe is best and what God would want for them. But the means, my natural means is trying to coerce and trying to get them, manipulate them to get to do what they want. And the relationship is pretty torn and and damaged at this point. And I have said to God and to other people, all I can do at this point is to pray. And then I said, as soon as I said it, which is what I should have only been doing the whole time, right. is asking them and asking God right. that if I, if I get comfortable and God's going to work, and then they say, well, what if they're asking God for the opposite thing? And I said, I hope they are mm-hmm. because what's going to happen is God's going to do what's best. And if both of us are asking and one of us is wrong, we will, we will get God fixed. will help us get there. God will help us get there. The trouble is... When neither person is praying, you're just doing your own thing. And one person praying, whether I'm right or wrong about what should happen, God's going to work that out. And pray, and uh, it, it has released me into a kind of freedom where now I can just love this person, even though right now it's having to be kind of at a distance for the nature of our relationship. But I'm able to love and to pray. And pray is a form of love because mm-hmm. when you get to... The character of Jesus, that's why Jesus gets down to it. everything's about love. So even my prayers, even if my prayers are wrong, because I know people feel that, because I'm just aware of that. My prayers may be wrong. Well, the good part about when Jesus, you know, the illustration he uses, if, if a son asks for a, a fish or, or something harmful, mm-hmm. God's not going to give it to you. You know right. what I'm saying? God, yeah. He's not going to, you ask for something and God goes, ha ha, here's a stone. Yes, you know, exactly. you wanted something bad. I'm going to give it to you to show you how wrong you are. Yes. You know, God, God by his nature is not going to do damage to his child just no. because you said some magic word. Mm. And if I, if Which we, is what, when people say to me, I'm afraid of praying the wrong thing. You can't pray the wrong thing. Yeah, you as no. a four-year-old can't say the wrong thing to your parent. You go, okay, here's the keys to the car. Mm-hmm. Well, I will <laughs> say the one thing that, that I wouldn't say it's a wrong thing to pray but isn't helpful is to try and pray polite prayers. Mm. It, because in the end, it doesn't help. So I pray, I find myself praying for things I really want, even if I know that it isn't what Jesus wants. Because what I know is Jesus and I will work that out. I Because what I know is if I pray what I know Jesus wants me to pray, but it's not what I want, then we're not having a conversation anymore. Yeah. I'm pretending. And he well, you knows. Brought, you brought dishonesty into your well, you're doing this, Right. You're doing the same thing to Jesus you talked about doing to the person. I'm trying to manipulate yes. Jesus. Yeah. I yes. am, I'm saying what you want me to say. Now, come on. Yeah. yeah. And, I, and I think the best prayer you can pray at that point is to say, God, this is what I want. But, as Jesus prayed, yeah. your will over my will. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What you what, Have your will be done. This is what I want. If there's a way to do this in a way that is what you would want, yeah. find it because I can't figure it out. But I'm releasing that to you, and there's freedom in that. So, yeah. to me, prayer is endlessly beneficial. I mean, in, in many ways, it is the number one thing we're called to do. Well, I get we're called to love, but prayer is a form of love. And well, Jesus said, my house is going to be a house of prayer. Yes. And it's where we're communicating with God. I will say this as well, and a lot of people don't know this at our church. We are also these days, Monday through Friday, practicing mm-hmm. non-get-what-you-want kind of prayer. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We are practicing prayer 
as a discipline to honor God and to shape our hearts yes. twice a day online on Facebook that you can participate in if you if you are so inclined that yes. way at 6.30 in the morning, 5.30 in the afternoon, Monday through Friday. And it really is just us trying to shape ourselves into people who are shaped by God's practices and become mm -hmm. people that depend on God for everything instead of trying to get God to do stuff that we think is the right thing to do. Yes, and trying to get other people to do stuff. I mean, that's. I think that's yes, a big. I that think is, that's a big that part is. of it. That if I would get myself to the place, and I'm talking about someone who's who's right now. This is my 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 big struggle of if I can get myself to a place of realizing prayer, it is a power sharing device from from God, and it's not some like because oh I guess I gotta pray because you know it is it is Jesus saying hey I want to work with you on this thing that instead of me constantly going at my kids or go, going at my spouse for all the things they don't do for me or that I feel like they should do or how they should live different doesn't mean I don't talk to them about it. But if I ask them, hey, this is what I think is best. Can we work on this? Even if they say no, I continue to ask God because God's going to work in the midst of it. And I, I agree. I think it's, mm -hmm. I, it is the thing. It is, yeah. It's just huge. These days I've been um, trying to model my prayers after the Lord's Prayer mm -hmm. sort of mm -hmm. as a discipline. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I, I'm not a recitation guy. I don't recite it. I, I use it as a guide. But uh, I've found the wisdom of Jesus in that prayer is the very first thing, other than addressing God as Father, which is, you know, that's the starting point. Mm -hmm. But the very first thing he tells us to pray for is, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth mm -hmm. as in the heaven. And that's more, that's not as much about what happens around me as what happens in me. Mm -hmm. right. And that's the way that I've begun to pray it, is to say, God, let your kingdom come. But not, not the external stuff that I want to see come, but I need your kingdom to come in me. Mm -hmm. yep. And if the, I know if that will happen, then all this other stuff, that takes care of itself. And, I, and it takes care of me in the midst of all of that's that right. other stuff. Mm -hmm. I just think that I've found that's really good. praying that has opened me up to the wisdom of how Jesus told us to pray because that really is, that's the foundational piece right there. And if you start from that footing, you know, then the rest of your prayers, like you said, can be whatever you say. Oh, yeah, you can say whatever you want to. But you ground them in the kingdom, and, right. it, and it's coming in, in this world. Yeah. Well, and I'll even say this to, to get back to where we started with this determinism thing and does God determine. The very fact that Jesus trained his disciples and us to say to God, let your kingdom come mm -hmm. means it's not happening. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, and so God asked us to cooperate in that. Yeah. If it's already determined, the kingdom's just coming. Yeah. Jesus might have said something else. Just pray, hey, all glory in the kingdom that is already come, that mm -hmm. God is determined is going to happen. But he says, I want it to happen here just like it's happening mm -hmm. yeah. there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, to wrap things up, um, you know, the, the question, very first question was, can, really at its root was, can prayer change things? Yes. I think that is a resounding yes. Yes. And uh, so what's the point in uh, making people who will wind up in hell? I don't believe that's, that's what God has done. Uh, so the, uh, I hope that clears up uh, the premise of your question and, and, the, and the focus of those questions. I hope that certainly grounds you a little more in the nature of who God is and what he's done. Uh, so, but thanks for uh, sending that in. We've got, Absolutely. like I said, we've got a, a list of uh, thoughtful questions we'll be tackling over the next few weeks. So tune in next week. We're going to get to another one. But for today, uh, thanks for joining in with us, and uh, we'll see you next week. Bye.